in the studio, we've been joined by Dr. David Moenina Senge, Minister of um, Basic and Senior Secondary Education. The minister is here to talk on his radical inclusion book, Seven Steps to Help You Create a More Just Workplace, Home and World, and also among other developments in his ministry. Good morning, Mr. Minister. Welcome to AYV. Thank you. Good morning. Um, let, let's start off with the book. Um, what's in it and what's the audience you're targeting in the book? Which audience are you targeting? It's a very interesting question. I think when I started writing the book, first of all, I didn't um, want to write the book. I got a call from Melinda Gates, um, Melinda French Gates team to say, look, look, we're trying to get authors from around the world um, to write. And they searched all around the world. And I was one of the people they were considering, have I ever thought about writing a book? I was like, sure, I could write a book about A, B, C, D. And they said, well, why don't you write a book about um, what you're doing in Sierra Leone on girls' education? And I said, OK. I went back home and I wrote a couple of pages, and they liked it. And that's how I started writing. So as I was writing, I realized that it was a book that I could use. I do use the book myself regularly, and anybody can use. And um, it turns out that it's a book that you can use, I can use, leaders can use, children can use, old people can use, particularly if you want to make the world more just, if you want to make the world more inclusive. It's interesting, the quote that Einstein said is about giving opportunities to everyone. That is the point about radical inclusion. It's saying that everybody, irrespective of who they are, must show up how they feel to show up, must be able to speak up, and must be able to take action. The reality is, we are not included. You are not included. Everybody's not included. Even the Queen of England was not included. Um, this was her platinum uh, jubilee when, before she died. And if you remember the state opening of parliament in her last one, she couldn't give it. What they did was they took her crown, put her crown on the stool, and the then Prince Charles, who's now king, read her speech. Do you know why? because she had a mobility issue. They did not want to see her in a wheelchair. She and the, 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 the rest of the people were embarrassed to see the queen, whose brain was very functional and could read, but they did not want to see her in a wheelchair. So people with disabilities are not included. Women are largely not included in our society. Black people in Western world are not included, irrespective of how much money you have and how much class you have. And everybody, at some point, will hurt themselves and will go through things that will show that they're excluded. And as a world, we are worse off with exclusion. So it's a book that is uh, meant to recognize that it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. But here are ways in which you and I can contribute to a more inclusive society at the workplace at the home and in the world. So it's a, it's a, it's a tool that we can all use. All right, uh, b before we go into some of the steps in the book, firstly, I'm, I'm interested in, in understanding what's your definition of the key concept in this book? For example, how, how did you define the workplace? How did you define a home or the world in general? Uh, it's, it's a good question. Um, the workplace is just everywhere we are, where we spend most of our time and have colleagues, where it's not family. So at a place like AYV, how are the interns treated? Do the people who are the C-level, the, the executives, do they drink tea in a different place from where the interns are? Do they share ideas? Because when that happens, you don't have cross-pollination of ideas. You, it's worse off for an organization when there's segregation within it. So an office, an institution, a place of work. Um, for the home, it's at the, it's at the house. How are women treated? Do you expect your women to be just cooking and serving you food when you come? Um, is that the sole and primary expectation that you have? Do you expect that the woman should not contribute? Do you expect that the man should be the one breaking his back um, every minute? What role do you expect for the children? Do you eat all the chicken and the children who are supposed to grow don't grow? You know, it's, it's ways of how do you include the voices of your children? Are you 
screaming and beating your children left and right so they can't express themselves even if somebody hurts them because they're afraid to tell you? How do you include their voices? And for the world, it's, it's elements around big negative things, around racism, around sexism, around um, just the things that we need to fight for to have a more peaceful world. Mm -hmm. And can you also help us in your view, what is radical inclusion? Yeah, radical inclusion means we stop at nothing until everyone, irrespective of their race, their gender, their economy, their geography, their religion, can be given the same opportunities. And it's about removing the infrastructure. If we need to break this wall, we'll break the wall. If we need to build a ramp, we'll build the ramp. If we need to change the law, we will change the law. If we need to um, create new tools, we'll create new tools, write policies. It means we'll change the infrastructure, we'll change the legislation, we'll change the physical and digital um, environment so that we can see you how you want to be seen. And I, I, I'm, I, in this conversation, you wear natural hair. You should not be uncomfortable for wearing natural hair how you want. If you want to not wear natural hair, people should not be making fun of you for not wearing natural hair. These things about our societies that make you con self-conscious and not show up how you want to be, we should remove that. It's about being mindful. If I choose to dress how I dress, you should not make me feel uncomfortable because I dress that way. Um, when it's not inappropriate. Um, so it's about really changing our society such that everybody can contribute at their fullest potential. You've also um, published uh, a lot of academic articles. There's the minister, the, your ministry. There's also uh, your patent history. There's also music, Afrobeat rapper, Gao Pekin and others. Now, what's, what's, what's the difference or how do you relate this to the book? Are you having any inspirations from the work you do? Is it being included in this book? Yes, I mean, I do. So the book talks a lot about my experiences. So, for example, um, you know, I've been around the world and um, there's this one day when I had, I was hosting TED Med. It was a big deal, big, big, big deal. I'm the top guy. And I'm walking back in D.C. and this white guy comes, had a bottle in his hand and says, go back to where you come from. Go back to Africa. And I was like, look, guy, um, I, I, I'm studying in Boston. It's like, oh, I know your accent. You sound like you're from Sierra Leone. Go back to Sierra Leone. But it wasn't, I, I'm in Sierra Leone. I was going to go back. I was studying over there. But it was the physical threat. It was that when I was at that, my highest point, was when he brought in racism, but it's not just about me. Obama, racism increased. The whole birth and movement was racism. So black people in general, and I faced that. It's like when I, was, when I studied in Norway, um, you're going to the airport through the security, and always they randomly called on you. You're the only one they randomly call on, all the white people they don't call on. And, um, I experience and I share a lot of that. But even in Salon, you mentioned that. People, I get so much hate. There, there was, there's the guy on social media who went and curated all these photos about me when I was in college for say, to say that I was gay and I was a pedophile and such I should resign. That level of hate that people spend time to curate against me for what? Because I'm just myself because I, 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 I dress how I dress, because um, they wear, I don't know, black and white, monotone, I like color, and I, I believe it's vibrant. It's, it's how I am, because I have dreadlocks. I have people come to me and say, um, Bo, you're not fit for be minister because you get that, uh, oh, na jamba no more you smoke. Oh, um, uh, why they rap? You're not too serious for yourself. And yet, I rap because I think it's creative, because that's how I think, that's how I explore, um, that's how I get into the zone. And I see all these young people who can now rap, and just, I saw some audio from some grammar school kids um, who were rapping about um, no violence during the elections, and they can see that it's possible. 
Don't just say if you try to even say in a rapper, that means they mama for them begin pray for you now. But today, um, I have students. What's up? The, the lady boy, Manya. Mm -hmm. She's an eighth student, mm. top class student. And yet, she's a fantastic singer. Spoke to her mom, spoke to her dad. I collaborated with her, did a song with her. It's my pleasure, it's my honor to, to be able to collaborate with a student. She was still in school doing, and, and we, can, we can sing together. Um, I could sing with Drizzelik, I could sing with other people. It's my pleasure, it's my honor. Um, and so it's that I could show up how I want, I could wear how, what I... But the thing is, and I write this in the book, they do that to exclude you. They do that so you're not yourself, so you're unsettled. And it's always the responsibility of the people with power to bring you in. Um, and I speak, and one of that is President Bill. One day that they were president, you don't ask me about me, Dada. There is no day, and I've known him from before he was president. And since I came, there has never been a time when he says, oh, uh, David, I'm not sure. I think you should cut your hair. There's never been a day when he goes, oh, David, I don't like what you wear. Ne never. So I'm fooling myself, and I can be at my best. The reason why I can go and, and, and do the work that I do is because the person with the power in the room allows me to show up and be how I want to be. Now, now with, with um, your fine um, understanding of the Western culture and the African culture and, and, and what you think um, are, 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 are serving as barriers towards radical inclusion, and um, you've been in Sierra Leone for a very long time, you're now involved in governance, you're now involved in, in, in structuring certain sector to ensure we, we push as a nation. You know, juxtaposing all that with this book and, and looking at the steps you mentioned, the blocks or the barriers we have towards radical inclusion, are they visible or are they just of the mindset? No, I mean, the, the, the book does show that it's possible to change. And it starts from, you know, the day that I, and President Bill talks about this very openly. He was against the pregnant girls going to school himself. Um, the day that I took the oath of office was the same day that President Bill said pregnant girls should not go to school. He didn't start it. There was already an existing government policy from the APC days in, in, in 2010. There was a Bramanja report which recommended this, and the cabinet then said pregnant girls should not go to school. So it was already there. And he was just saying that we'll continue it. This was the day that I took signs to be minister. So I went back with him and I said, did you mean that, sir? Um, and he said, look, if, I, if I've not met a pregnant girl who wants to go to school, um, usually they don't want to. But if you find one, if you, listen, if you talk to some and we learn something, I'll be willing to listen. I'll be willing to change. So he gave me hope. He gave me hope to go and engage. So those things, my family did not want pregnant girls to go to school. I sat in this chair and I write about that in the book or 98.1. The people who were in your seats raised the concern about the public, did not want pregnant girls to go to school, voiced the opinions. I will speak everywhere people did not want because of, usually we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid that, oh, they will influence other people. And until we begin to deconstruct the fears, well, are you sure? If, if it's your daughter, do you think your daughter will get pregnant? Why don't you talk to your daughter? Would your daughter do it? Uh, what about, um, but what about in church and mosque? They sit together in church and mosque. Why don't they influence each other there? At home, they sleep in the same bedroom. Why don't they influence each other in the same bedroom or at market where they spend most of the time? Well, okay, well, it's just, it's not good for society. But what do you mean it's not good for society? This child is a rape victim. She's under 18. She did not give a consent. She's been raped. You're saying now because she's raped, we should punish her again? because she's raped? Well, well, it's not punishment, it's for the other people. Well, let's go to the other people. My, do my daughter, Khadija, the, the, what do you think? Well, it's not for me, it's for the other girls. It's like, well, let the other girls make their own decision. Will you get pregnant if somebody sat next to you? No, Dada, I won't get pregnant. Well, so why do you think other people will? So it's the, 
deconstructing why people are afraid. People are afraid of something. And we all have fears. We all have fears of the unknown. And we have to engage and listen. And the reason why this book is doing very well in America, it's like number one on the racism um, and uh, section and, and for college students right now. And the reason why is because people don't know how to talk to others you disagree with. Mm. But take this election, APC, SLP people, or, or other just parties. There are some people, they don't even get other party. You get APC, man, they will not want to listen to SLP people, or you get other SLP people, they will not want to hear nothing. And the, the book speaks about ways in which we can speak to each other, listen to each other, so we can understand each other. It's, it's, uh, and in America, with racism, with the blue and red states, and it's not just Sierra Leone, the world is polarized. You're either there or you're here. And people don't have ways to communicate effectively. And so one step, the first step in radical inclusion is to identify the exclusion. Who's not in the room? Why are women not um, in the room, on the boards? Why are children with disabilities not in the classroom? Today, we have seen an increase by 1,800% of kids with disability in our schools. Why were they not there before? Why couldn't we get more? You have to understand why, the, who's not in the room, who's at the door protecting people to not get into the room. Mm -hmm. For those who are in the room, who's not at the table, who's standing in the corner, now that they savvy and now that they do this. For those who are at the table, who's not talking? Why are they not talking? Because until we can get a diverse view around the table, and engage, we do not take the advantage um, of our diverse intellectual capability to promote our offices, our homes, and our country. So that's the point, is to identify the exclusion. And for that, you have to really under, um, uh, pause, remove yourself from the situation. Um, step two, it, I mean, I don't know whether we should go through the steps now and you have other <laughs> questions. But, but on step two, it's to um, listen to understand. Mm -hmm. People that not savvy listen. They, they, and it's not just Saloon. I'm not talking about Saloon, man. In the world, we need to understand. And listening, being really good at listening, is to listen to what the person is not even saying. It's not just listening to what they say, but like, what's in the person that you talk? What's your body language? Why are you saying that? Who's in the room when you say that? What's the environment to get you to say what you truly mean to say? If there's a boss who's a man and powerful, and um, they, you invite some young lady who, um, to your C-suite office, is that the best place to have a conversation about her projection and growth? If you have an intern, should the best place be to go to the expensive restaurants to have the conversation? So it's just listening, understanding where to listen, how to listen. Um, in, in the book, I, I listen to pregnant girls. I listen to teachers. I listen to mothers. I listen to chiefs. I listen to boys who are impregnate. I listen to Okada. I listen to market women. I listen to everyone. That helps me understand better. Um, step three is you have to understand why you, why us, why now. There are many people who worked on this issue before, wanna, like many, many people who, who cared about this issue. But the timing wasn't right. It couldn't happen. So it's about understanding why now. What about now makes you right to bring social change? What about now makes you the best person? But I also speak about this in the book. Why not you? You and I can care about the same thing, but you might not be the voice to deliver it. You have to be selfless to understand that ah, maybe I'm not the right person. And in the fight for, um, for radical inclusion, for pregnant girls to go to school, the development partners, and this is why actually, and I think President Bio was also responding to this in that way, the development partners were trying to dictate to us. You, just because you're helping us does not mean you dictate to us. Uh, you have issues in your own countries. They have corporal punishment in America. It's, they can do corporal, then they beat them beginning in America at school. America backward, past we. You know, people thinking like for field state, America, and they all seen the. But in 17 states, 
in public schools, they get paddles and they beat them. We, we, we have gone past that because we know that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission said we should remove it. We know that we want to have a peaceful and non-violent society. We know that we want to have our children participate. So we pull out, but not to America, right? So is this element of um, you can't dictate to us. You're not better pass we. You're not savvy pass we. You get money, bang, but uh, we, you're not better pass we. Um, so why not you? Why are you the wrong person to, to, to deliver this? Um, step four is building the coalition. And people don't like to talk across aisles. People don't mm -hmm. like to engage. Why did this? Maybe they buy the book. Or maybe they say we don't have your other stuff. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Um, step four is... Um, is, uh, is building a coalition, uh, working, building allies. And allies can include family, friends, but also people who don't like you, people who want you to not succeed, but they have separate and different goals towards the same vision. So a coalition must involve all of that. Um, step five is taking action. The only way to get through the hard stuff is to do the hard stuff. You have to take action. And um, in this case, it was the cabinet decision, like bringing the cabinet paper and going to cabinet and having that intense debate. Um, it was lots of people who read the books to the cry in that section because they're like, it, it, it's, it's a really good. Um, and I'm grateful because cabinet secretariat allowed me to, because cabinet is secret usually, and the, the, the president and cabinet allowed me to write about the cabinet session. There's no, you can't know who's saying what, but I kind of speak a little bit about taking action. Um, and then once you take action, there is beyond the new normal. There are those ones who, um, the new normal, there are those ones who were in place to keep you segregated, to have this injustice in place. Now, the, those who were previously excluded, those who were included have to live together. They have to coexist. So how do you create? And in Sierra Leone, one of the ways, uh, there are many ways to do that. But comedy is a good way to normalize things, yeah? So I give an example, and Trevor Noah speaks about this. Remember One Port, where you were done? One Port was one of the best shows mm -hmm. that brought together, that tribalism was an issue. <coughs> mm -hmm. But One Port, where all oh, man, you laugh with all oh, man, you fool up party, you mend party with Sarah. Um, and we adored those guys until some of them began to spew hate again in the world later on. But when you watch One Port, maybe then for begin play One Port again, then for rerun that, maybe we didn't watch that. It brought us together. Um, we all laughed. Everybody, where you going to school? I don't know they talk about. Um, but even now, the comedians, right? They, they really shape our perspective. This, I love the comedians um, because they understand their power. Most people don't understand their power. Um, but in the beginning, where I can't, I mean, they, I mean, they joke, say, <laughs> ah, Narastaman, you know, Jamba. I didn't take it personal. <laughs> and then later I say, ah, you see that man, they, now they can't make belly picking, they go to school, you know. And then later on, the facts that I get that um, or dropped out of the jokes. And then it became, you know, Salon, we're so progressive that, you know, today we get that, that people then as minister, picking, then we get belly, they go to school, because all man for land, the comedy helped shape what is acceptable. And I, people, it, they're very important for the new normal. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond inclusion, we have to do it over and over and again. We have to keep expanding it. The reason is, so take the women's rights, women's uh, reproductive health in America. America thought that they had inclusion, whatever, solved the women's gender problem. And you saw what happened with the, Mm -hmm. with the Roe v. Wade. Um, we saw what happened with Brown v. Boards where um, uh, black people uh, and their education are being threatened. I was talking to a journalist yesterday in Mississippi. The schools are literally segregated now. And it's crazy to me that many years later, after all this fight that the world has had, the system has allowed itself to go back to a segregated, um, and people think, oh, it's okay, it's the same thing. But all the white people in the white suburbs are in the school, all the black people, 90% of these schools are just black people. And it's, it's 
we have to keep working. That those are the steps of radical inclusion. If you have it available here. I do, I do. Actually, um, let me see. There are, um, I'll read something from the I'll read something from the, from the cabinet decision. One of President Bill's superpowers is his ability to keep his emotions in check during debates. He listens closely and gives away as little as possible, even when he's delivering his opinions. You know, people then can look at President Bill and they talk, right? You know, or you know they smile, but it's his superpower. Most people talk about not knowing how the president feels about them. During the debate, several ministers kept referring to the president's public endorsement of the ban all those months and how a change might be viewed if the cabinet overturned it. At one point, the president uncharacteristically spoke of our minister, interrupting him to say that no one should worry about what he will say to the public should we decide to overturn the ban. And this is so important because now he's literally the champion of this, right? So this was written many years ago, mm -hmm. and he essentially is the one who's speaking about inclusion in... I had... Anyway. This was the pivotal moment. I saw faces relax and contort. More chairs moved. The minister stood up to get more coffee and biscuits. The room had been tense. Now that the president had addressed the elephant in the room, more people were willing to support my paper. Nearly two hours of passionate discussion later, everyone had spoken at least twice and had responded to several rounds of arguments and questions. The president gave his closing remarks and the summary of the debate. At last, he said, can someone please move? I don't remember hearing anything after those words or noticing who moved in favor of the motion or who seconded it. But his question will have ended with, that we adopt the paper presented by the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education to lift the ban on pregnant girls from attending school and to also de develop the policy of radical inclusion and comprehensive safety. All I could feel were the tears streaming down my face. Then I heard, congratulations, David, from my colleagues, including many who had raised objections at the start of the meeting. It was for moments like this that I traded my job in the private sector for an unstable government appointment and for the opportunity to shape my country's legacy for the better. When I signed up to work with President Bio, it was clear that debate and discussion will exist in our relationship. And I knew he was committed to creating a more just and inclusive society, even if that meant going against what he once believed and publicly stated. Like me, he believes that it is only through action that we can begin to change the world. Sometimes action means doing what you can to change other people's minds. Sometimes the action you need to take is to change your own. That's the hardest and bravest one of all. Still, even in that moment I knew I had to keep the celebration brief. The work had only just started. I had spent so much time thinking, what if we don't succeed? that I didn't have a plan for what if we win. Now, uh, <laughs> how will one get this book? I, um, now <laughs> you're like, I want to read it. Tell me the whole story, Mr. Minute. I want to see it. Uh, you can get it, there are two locations. Well, one, you can get it online, but maybe that's far. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to Sport Zone on the beach by where the basketball court is, mm -hmm. um, they do sell it there. Or if you go to Lead Hotel, um, they also sell it there. It's 650 new leons, and that's just the price online. That's, that's how the publishers sell it, um, and that's just the converted leons uh, value. All right. Uh, now, be, before you leave us, it's, it's more proper that we, we, we move away a bit from the book and talk about your, your work, your job in the Ministry of Education. And, and, and more so when we have concerns that have been around, especially with regard to um, the WASC examination. Yes. Uh, firstly, um, before even we speak on those concerns, do you have any projections when it comes to the last result we saw and this one? Are students going to perform better? You know, I was reading yesterday, well, a couple of things uh, as we transition from the book. So the book, I wrote it two years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, it just came out now. Um, 
And in Parliament, we passed the law, the new Basic Education Act, that legislates and enacted radical inclusion into law, which is amazing, which is like uh, beyond our wildest dreams. Um, but this law, you know, when we came five years ago, we could have developed a new law. But we didn't. And what President Biu had asked for was we should experiment, we should test, we should learn, we should implement the FQSC. And at the end, we use everything that we've learned to make it into law, which is fit. And this law, and it's not just me who says it, UNESCO says it, is the most progressive law in the entire world for basic education, which is people are already coming to Sierra Leone to learn from us and from FQSC. That said, there are challenges which we'll speak about a little bit. In um, the past rates that we have for leaving high school, for primary school, for example, is in the upper 80s, 85, 86%, I think the kids will either meet that or they will beat that in the MPSC. The kids are just learning. They just love learning. It's a new day in primary school, okay? In Beke, they will do the same. In WAS, there are people who cheat the system. But we will solve it. We will fix it. When we come back, and if it pleases His Excellency that I'm here, not to campaign, though, but I, I let like me walk where they do, Your Excellency. So if I am here in, in basic education again, we will make sure that the errors that are there, where people then be corrupt in the, in the in once, we will fix it. And, and we, 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 by putting systems in place, we don't lay all the groundwork, the data, the school's uh, information, with the registration, NAMIC one for do, the universal learner ID. So not just will the kids do well. In my hypothesis, and it's not hypo we believe that any regular candidate, school picking, we don't go school, being we go SS1, say reach SS3, so they are all going to do better. They're doing better because they have the textbooks, the teachers have been trained, they've just been learning, the tools are there online for them, education radio, their confidence is up, you know, education is better, they will do better. However, there are teachers, schools, okay, that decided that they will take advantage of government money and government magnanimity for pay school fee and was fee, that then go take people them, security them all, secretary them all, for can take money in their hand and go register them as candidates. Those people haven't been studying, right? Now, then people they did that, then they cheat. You need to go FSSG, CPK, I, I have money to schools. Then they, what is the spy? FSSG, CPK, they spy. You need to go to Academy or Amadia. You see Amadia, because they know they worked hard. Now then corner, corner, line, line school then, eh? somebody will not be in security all this time. They don't study for one school. They don't go, they don't pay 1.1 million, 1.4 million to a teacher or to, they can't add a name panel. Of course, it, nine, 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 nine care about leakage. So we need to be able to separate the, when people speak about quality, like say quality education is just one switch. By the way, when we speak about quality education, uh, we've had this debate here before many times, quality of the system, how we monitor, quality of the learning environment, quality of teaching, quality of learning, quality of materials. Quality is not just one switch, right? Quality education is made of all of these components, each of which is made of multiple components, okay? But on learning outcomes in particular, this is a long way of saying that I have confidence that the kids are gonna do well. Mm -hmm. We will see his results. So remember last time that I spent a lot of time, people then they talk, say, oh, we don't pull results then. We don't pull results then back, yeah? Those schools, uh, in the sense that if you spy and we catch you with mobile phone, your results only come on. And we catch lots of people with mobile phones. There's no reason to spy. This government believes in credibility and removing corruption in the education system. We believe that the way we transform this country is by investing in people and education. So if you spy, why will we pull your results? If you are caught with a mobile phone, you sign. You never go tell your mama, say, hey, mama, then catch me with a mobile phone, no. But you sign, which they do. Your result is not going to come out. Because you know, say, you never get mobile phone, mm -hmm. not exam hall. If you collude, when I all go sit down inside place, when I write, this, the teacher writes on a blackboard, when I all copy that blackboard day, we will catch you because it is easy to know. You're, when I all not to the same aid, when I get. When I always collude, then they see you result. 
if you if we know that the school does not exist uh, in that way, they don't get SS3, or they don't get 400 beginning at SS3, then they go register 400. Would they, would they, would they pull on that result? So are they encouraged Combrada and Vonose, this government to do everything but bring kind credibility in the school system? And that that credibility, the nine they make some of them people the results not get for Komoto. So are they, I already don't tell Luna. See, but Kuma results not get for Komoto. Now because we don't put system in place for fight malpractice. So may they the spy. But there is a way for all who they catch them. Then we school picking them within our public schools, uh, regular schools. I, they're amazing. I, I love, I, they're, they're wonderful. They're, yeah, they're fantastic. I see, I see you conducted a, a nationwide tour visiting every district, talking to parents, students, and teachers. How has that helped your work in the ministry? It's such a fantastic question. I mean, I think, um, and I do write about this in the book, you know, in the past, people think leaders, if you're a leader, if you're a minister, I don't know, now, I don't know what's in them when they think about minister then. But me and minister, I did inside school boss, I did go in the beginning classroom, I, I, um, I'm everywhere because that's how I learn. I think what we have done, and this is why also President Bio has literally gone to almost every chiefdom in the country. If you leave Freetown, if you leave the comfort of your home, and you go and engage students in rural areas in other communities you learn how to address problems so the scratch card solution that we built came because of our engagements in rural areas because they were the ones who were suffering they were the ones who never saw their results and so every time president bill was somewhere this is what they would tell him say oh, president bill the scratch card like a pull out so then he instructed that we build this system the chiefs there are many teachers we get pink code the main teacher that in the village with them for the deal, they don't come out in. The chiefs report them. And so then we are building now a system where we are monitoring and we're testing it um, using fingerprints and image uh, digitizing school attendance. We will catch people. But it takes a lot of time to, to, to build the system. We've laid the foundation and we are so excited to continue to, to transform this country. Uh, and that includes just going all over, and I, I mm -hmm. love to, to, to go out in the field as well. Henry Commander on Facebook is asking, and good morning, Mr. Minister. Please, are schools going to be closed before elections or not? We have communicated this. Um, WAS goes until the 21st, which is why it is so important, and I'm so grateful, by the way, mm -hmm. that government NEC e e e C S L decided that there are no rallies because those will have been disruptive for our mm -hmm. children's learning. Mm -hmm. Election important too, but the future of this country and I will pick in there. So let's not disturb our children. That's why I'm happy the grammar school kids are singing about no violence. I'm happy all these students are speaking about no violence. And we keep telling parents, election not to fit fit. Now policy. If the person not can't tell you what it go do for you based on policy, not believer. If you not so it's 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 about asking questions, what are you gonna do for me and my children? What are you going to do for my environment? Do I believe that you can do it? Have I seen you do it? Um, and schools will go on until the 21st because we believe that this country is peaceful and this country will stay peaceful and there will be free and fair elections. All right. Um, 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 uh, and before we go over to David and Wilson for, for the new summary quickly, um, again, to the general perspective or perception because you, you mentioned how schools are currently involved um, in malpractices and and how it will take time i sat in 20, my work in 2010 and it was virtually impossible to have a mobile phone yes. in an exam hall and and when we've, shif we've shifted to a practice i just want to call it a practice to where it's now normal where it's it's no longer a taboo how how do we how do we eradicate those eels how long will it take by practice you mean mm -hmm. well i think first of all people like to there's this syndrome called oh it been better in our days you know you know this country them they cancel one whole old level now the whole country because the leakage come out and i think because we did not have mobile phones and facebook and you don't have somebody going on facebook for feel say nice happy all team nobody knew about it there was malpractice before and actually, just based on the evidence since 2018 when we come, it's going down, the number of phones. But you're right that 
Now, depending on the character phone that class, some of them maybe not forget them, forget most of them you forget it's inside your pocket. I don't know how you forget it, but it's they know they shouldn't have it. That's why the way we have we will deal with it across West Africa is if you're caught with a mobile phone once, your entire results are cancelled, and we have to be strict about these things. Mm -hmm. And parents have to tell their children, Hey, Junior, I'm mommy. Left your phone at home before you go take exam. It's our parents' responsibilities as well. It's the kids' responsibility. Maybe the beginning they forget, whatever, and I forget to forget. Mm -hmm. But we have to be able to, to check and ask. I think that malpractice, as I mentioned, there are these few schools. It's not, it's not nation, it's not scattered. It's not scattered. There are organized syndicates, and that's what uh, ACC has been working with us. And, People just cheat. People, there's bad people everywhere, <laughs> even that have added in the cheats. Yeah. All right, Mr. Minister, I'd like you to talk on uh, two things. Firstly, what would you do with the proceeds, the sales? And do you have, <laughs> because the book launch is actually not in Sierra Leone, is not there yet. any plan to have publishing houses in Sierra Leone? You're, so, you're asking such amazing questions. I, we should have, I mean, I think there's a Sierra Leone writer's, uh, something that Malam O does, which is fantastic, but I think we do need to have more publishing houses in Sierra Leone. I learned that for Africans living in Africa, writing nonfiction, we're not book who you count out on one hand. I, I've been still trying to think there's Mandela, there's Desmond Tutu, there's me, I don't know how many, there. you can count nonfiction by an African living in Africa, on Africa, published by one of the main houses in America, not the thing. Um, so we need to be able to, one, have lots of agents that can do this. Um, we need to be able to publish here as well and share. But my book, before I released it in America, I left it in the libraries here. The first copies were in the libraries here. Um, I made it available in Sierra Leone, such that if you want part of radical inclusion, you can get it in Sierra Leone. Um, physical copies are available. I, I will see about doing a public launch here. Um, maybe you'll host it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to stay with us. Uh, 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 Although you didn't start. get to answer the part on the proceeds. <laughs> uh, the, the, the part, look, I am a citizen. You know, I wrote the book, so it's, I'll think about it. Okay. But one, it's Mr. Minister, before, before we close your, the session with you, um, you've been the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education and we're going to elections. Are, are there anything you think you could have done with more time? And um, if given the mandate again, what areas will you concentrate on? I think um, what we have been able to achieve in education is significant. We've been able to raise well over 200 million additional support in addition to the 22% that we've had. We've been able to ensure that our children get an education even in COVID when other countries couldn't do it, quality education. We've provided 10 million learning materials. We've built tools like the scratch card, saving parents billions of leons, provided the buses, they ran for five years well. Um, provided teacher training, uh, increased teacher salaries by 45%, built 1,000 classrooms, wrote three new syllabuses, basic education, senior secondary education, pre-primary, developed new teaching and learning materials. Globally, we've led. Um, President Bill is, one, is the foundational uh, education foundational learning champion um, and one of the Secretary General's transforming education um, leader and co-chair of the high level steering committee. At the district level, uh, attendance is high, retention is high, we've achieved gender parity in three years, fastest anywhere in the world. When people talk about Sierra Leone, it almost seems like Nafim. And I think it's, we, it, maybe it's hard for us to see that kind of transformation. Mm -hmm. But across all sectors, we are better today on every indicator in education than we were yesterday. So have we done a lot? Yes, we have. And that's what's in our new Basic Education Act. That's what will shape where the future of education goes for basic education. When we come back, because we've laid this solid foundation, I think Sierra Leone is on course to be the country that sets the record in the world for how we move our people from illiteracy to literacy. 
now our literacy levels as in 2018 um, or so uh, the, from the last census um, and DHS was around 52%. For adult women, it was 10% of adult rural women could read and we've been able to expand adult education, expand entrepreneurship. I think with the foundation we've laid, with all the things that we don't do, all this challenge here, we're better today than we were yesterday. But what gives us hope is that we will be better tomorrow than where we are today when we come. In, in. So what I will focus on in the new term will be to remove corruption in education. And we'll do that by digitizing. We will get more connectivity. We'll apply more technology. We go digitize. We go pull corruption in the education system. We will come up with new learning methods so that our kids can learn how to read and understand what they read through foundational learning. We'll invest more in teachers, community teachers. We'll think about ways in which we will keep in code cool and make sure that they will get in code, cool, stay where they are. We will make sure that. Um, the learning outcomes continue to improve. So the children are getting what we call the five C's, critical thinking, computational thinking, comprehension, creativity, and civics. Um, we will, Sierra Leone, in 10 years, will be different in all shapes and forms than where we are today. Because of these five years, the foundation that we've laid, and by God's grace, the next five years of what we will do to build on top of this foundation. Mm. And, and, and someone is asking of, on Facebook, how can they get access to the book in bold? Ah, that's a good question. See, you know, the, somebody goes to Jesus back now, Falaba. Uh, the best thing, maybe they do it online, online, but they can send somebody to buy it for them here and um, they can bring it. Okay. I will, I'm really looking because uh, I'm really looking to see how the publisher can send more to Sierra Leone because I believe our people should, our people love to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so lastly, I'd uh, like to ask you, what's your message to parents, to students who are actually listening and watching you this morning? So to parents, we have set forth on a journey to transform education in Sierra Leone. That transformation will not be possible without you. You have to work with your children to understand what they're doing, to make sure that they're learning, that they're showing up, that they are doing their homework, that they are taking care of the learning materials that we're giving them, and that they are being good civic citizens. You know, I went to the PU Amadia final, and we PU is called, and then begin stone. I went into the crowd, all oh, man they run. I said, no, you picking stone me, I mean, I can't stone me. And then the Amadea kids were like, oh, Mr. Kamoya made this stone. It's like, no, we were tell the company they made a left for stone. And the stones were coming out from the compound. It didn't matter. But we have to lead as parents. We have to take responsibility of our transformation. Now, for the students, I think we also, when we remove corporal punishment, not so for me, you go begin to nap to your teacher then. Mm -hmm. But we are telling you that it's your responsibility to be taking care of how you grow and develop, that you have a responsibility of leadership in you, that you can learn. It's a responsibility to so show up, to listen attentively in class, ask critical questions, uh, study, and do your work. Grow, play a lot. Grow to be a, eat, play. That's your responsibility to be a, a, a kid who can grow up to fulfill their potential. Government is doing that. Government is investing in making sure that our children don't die before they're five, that they can go to pre-primary school when they're five, that they can have 13 years of education free in public schools. And if you're a woman in STEM, 17 years free. Because we believe it's, as President Bill says, human capital is the only way we can change our country. So parents have a responsibility. Learners have a responsibility. And those who are in school, good luck. I mean, I love, I love the kids. They're, ha they're having so much fun. Where I can go there and then primary school then. Where if I wear short sleeve, where I go now behind all the scratch. Then so that all the beginning the one hold me, the one touch me here, then they scratch me back. But you know, it's part of the, the work. Mm. I, I'm happy that the kids are having fun in school and it's beautiful to watch that transformation happen in a short period of time. Okay. All right. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Uh, we have been talking to Dr. David Moina Senge, who is the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education. He has talked on his book, Radical Inclusion, Seven Steps to Create, to help you create a more just workplace, home and world. And also he has mentioned some of the developments in his ministry.